off last time, you may recall, Captain Bilge's pirate ship was in pretty bad shape. It seems she had been rammed and dunked by one of her intended victims, a large luxury liner. Poor old Bilge was terribly broken up. Don't oh, disgrace of it all. To think that the last of the great pirates didn't even have one piece of silver in his seven treasure chests. No, nothing but a lot of water and a couple of goldfish. It finally remained for Garlic the Parrot to solve their dilemma. Hey, boss, I've got it. I know we can get all the silver we need. But you, you nitwit, it's not private enough. Come on, let's go to my cabin. Uh-oh, that could lead to trouble. You see, the captain's cabin happened to be occupied occupied by none other than our tiny friend, Crusader, busily collecting evidence. And by the time he heard the pair approaching, they were but a few steps away. There didn't seem to be any place the wee rabbit could hide. And yet, a split second later, when Bilge opened the door, Crusader had somehow vanished. Well, at any rate, he was well camouflaged. Too well, perhaps. For Bilge, intent upon hearing Garlic's plan, ignored him completely. Let's face it, boss. As pirates, we're all washed up out here. There's just no money in it. But I gotta have silver. I just gotta. Okay, so we go where there is silver. More silver than anywhere else. The big city. New York City. Gee, I'll be rich. That is, if we can find it. It's a cinch. They've got 20 million knives, 30 million forks, 50 million spoons, all made out of silver. Say, that's a lot of silver, all right. Oh, but wait, how do we get it? Ah, that's the best part. We put our old friend, the professor, on the job. Not a bad idea. We'll head for New York immediately. And so, blowing out the candles in their unusual lamp, the two plotters left, never suspecting that their plan had been overheard. Crusader wasted no time. Quickly, he penned a note of warning to the threatened city. But hold on, how would he send it? In that bottle, of course, just the thing. Hey, look out! The glass! What was that? Wouldn't you know, just as Crusader was about to cork up the bottle, in came Bilge. However, with Crusader behind the door, the cabin seemed empty, and so, satisfied that nothing was amiss, Bilge let the matter drop. Alas, how cruel fate can be for the swinging door had filled and corked the bottle with tiny crusader himself. And thus we leave our hero for the day, helplessly rolling about as the pirate ship is rocked by the waves.